Hey, what's up, guys? It's Chris here from Mixdown Online. The other day, I had an interesting comment, and it goes like this. Noisegate Cubase 9 video, please. Ah, he said please. So let's go and look into the Noisegate in Cubase. All right, so before we jump in, if this is your first time here, click on the subscribe button below in the notification bell, so every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. And don't forget to share and to like this video. Okay, now let's look into the noise gate in Cubase. Using a noise gate is something that can be very practical, especially on drums. This is where I tend to use a gate more than other sources, especially on the kick and snare. And that all depends on the type of recording I have to mix. Uh, for example, on a um, jazz production or indie rock and stuff, usually a gate might not be suitable um, it all depends but usually in jazz especially in jazz i'm never going to use a gate um, i'm mainly going to use a gate in a rock production or a pop production where i need a lot of attack out of the drums and i need the drums to be a bit more defined you know and uh, more punchy i guess so the use of a gate can help a lot in the case of an indie rock mix now the bleed is usually part of the sound especially on drums um, the bleed is not necessarily something bad so it depends on the type of uh, song i'm mixing now in this case i'm mixing a song that is a rock and pop type of song where um, I want to get rid of some bleed that comes into the snare. Um, so this is what I want to show you. Uh, I used, in this case, I used a gate in Cubase. So let's go and look into it. First, I'm going to have you listen to uh, this song that I'm mixing, I'm actually using the same song that I used on uh, the last two videos. Um, so if we listen to um, the drum take, the drum mix as it is right now, this is what we have. Okay, I'm going to solo the snare, the acoustic snare. So this is with the gate, okay? I'm gonna deactivate the gate. Okay, so now the problem I have right now without the gate on this snare track is the fact that there's a lot of hi-hat coming in and that can be aggressive at some point um, for this track anyways. Uh, so this is what I wanted to get rid of. There's some kick drum as well that comes into the mic, uh, the snare mic, but you know, the hi-hat is the, um, uh, the type of sound I just wanted to uh, eliminate or at least tone it down. So the use of a gate is gonna be my way to go in this case. Okay, so now let's listen to this again and then I'm gonna activate the gate and explain to you what I did with all the settings. Now the hi-hats are toned down, which sounds a bit better. So they're not completely out of the picture, but they're tamed down, okay? So I'm gonna keep it this way. So let me go through all the settings we have here on the Cubase noise gate. Uh, first, we have the threshold. Now the threshold will determine wh when the gate will open and close, okay? If I bring my threshold to zero, I'm just gonna bring down my range. This is what we get, nothing. Okay, that's basically it. The gate will stay closed. It's only gonna, it's gonna, gonna let through anything that comes above the threshold. So I need to bring that down. So everything that is above minus 27 is gonna open the gate. Okay, everything below that point is gonna be cut off. Um, now, uh, we have a light here, okay, that determines when the gate is closed or open. So open will be a green light, a uh, red light is when the, the, the gate is closed, and the uh, yellow light is the kind of transition in between uh, closed and open. Uh, now, next, what we have, uh, we have the attack hold and release, which are very important settings. The attack time is the amount of time once the threshold has been reached, is the amount of time it takes for the gate to open. 
Okay, so that's the attack time. In this case, I am uh, using it on a snare, so I want to have the fastest attack time. So it's way down to 0.1 milliseconds. The release time is the opposite, is the amount of time it takes for the gate to close. And the hold option is the amount of time you want the gate to stay open. Um, now, in this case, um, for drums, if I leave it at zero, Okay, opposed to 100 or 150. Okay, it's going to stay open longer. So I found, like for this, in this case, I found that one, 100 was my sweet spot. And then we have the range. Now the range is a very cool tool. Um, now right now the range is at infinity, which means when the gate is closed, it's like 100% closed. The range will actually leave some, um, some audio to get through the gate. Okay, so it's kind of, it determines the range of the gate itself. So if I want to tame down the sound instead of just cutting off the sound entirely, I'm going to play with the range. So let's play with the range setting. Okay, it's, it sounds a bit more natural because it lets a bit of the audio in. It doesn't cut out everything. So I kind of like that, uh, that option. This is a very important option on a gate. Uh, I would say it's going to keep your sound a bit more natural, okay, especially on drums. Because my goal wasn't to get rid of everything. It was mainly to tame down the hi-hats and the kick, but mainly the hats. So the setting is good. Now we'll go to the left here. We have the peak and RMS analysis. Now my starting point here is at 50. This is basically the way the gate is gonna analyze the audio. So if you put that to peak, uh, it's gonna be a bit more instantaneous, okay? A bit more direct. The RMS side will analyze the average volume. Now, depending on the other settings you have, um, one will be more noticeable than the other, okay? Uh, now, in my case, I just start up at 50, and most of the time, I don't even touch it. Um, now, we have the live option here, okay? Basically, it's the look ahead. Uh, the look ahead is something that you, uh, I would suggest you to always keep open. That means that the gate will detect what's coming, okay? So it's gonna be ready to activate the gate. So the look ahead will uh, basically help you to preserve the initial punch and transients of uh, the sound. So make sure the live is not activated and okay? you'll keep it as it is, because if you activate the live mode, uh, this will activate the no look ahead, okay? So let's keep that unactive. And then let's look at the side chain. The side chain is a detection filter. Uh, now, um, I'm on a snare right now, so I have the high pass filter activated and uh, I have it set up to uh, 225 hertz. So basically everything under 225 hertz will not be detected by the gate. It just gives me way more control over my gate. Um, so if I click on monitor, this is basically what the gate is hearing. Okay, now I'm gonna bring my range up like it was earlier. Okay, now um, I'm gonna bring that to 1.4K. which will be my go-to setting for a snare, but now I have some ghost notes um, happening here on this part of the song, and I wanna preserve that. So I want the, uh, uh, the ghost notes to, uh, to be able to activate the gates, okay? So in this case, I need to bring down my filter to 200 hertz or so, because um, ghost notes are a bit lower in range, okay? They sound a bit more muffled than a regular snare hit, which is a bit higher in pitch. Uh, so that's why I bring that down to that level. Okay. 
Now to complement this on my session, I have my bottom snare, uh, which takes care of the rest of the ghost notes uh, in my mix. Now the Q factor is useful when you activate the band pass filter, okay? Now this will determine the Q of your filter basically. So um, right now I'm using only the high pass filter and this is what we get uh, with these settings. Okay, if we listen in the mix, in the context of the uh, drum mix. So there you go, guys. You have an idea on how the noise gate in Cubase works. Again, you can use that on the kick, uh, on snare, toms, uh, all sorts of different sources. Now, my question for you is using a noise gate part of your workflow? Please leave your comments down below and don't forget to share and to like this video. And again, if you're new here on this channel, consider subscribing. All right, guys, until next time, see ya.